Coming up today, I'll show you how to set up iPhone mirroring. I'll also go over the key features and benefits. Then we'll go through some actual practical use cases. Hey, it's Chris. The introduction of iPhone mirroring for macOS Sequoia is by far the most interesting feature for me and to most people coming to the new OS. That's because having full control of your iPhone from your Mac marks a significant leap forward in integrating Apple's ecosystem, giving Apple users a unique, seamless, unified experience between their iPhone and Mac. There's three reasons why there's so much buzz about this particular feature. Number one, it's going to enhance productivity. Number two, it's going to simplify workflows. And number three, it's going to minimize disruptions. For a lot of people, it's the reason why macOS Sequoia is highly anticipated, not just for productivity enthusiasts, but for everyday users as well. Now, before we dig in, hopefully you've heard by now, I've got a new course available for pre-order, which will teach you how to go from shooting out of the box iPhone footage that looks and sounds decidedly common and unprofessional like this to shooting and editing iPhone footage that looks a lot more professional like this. The course is called Pro iPhone Video Essentials and it'll cover all the pro settings and knowledge that you need to shoot amazing, gorgeous, professional iPhone footage, whether it's for personal use, for marketing purposes, or maybe you're building up a YouTube channel. And if you pre-order today, you'll get instant access to my Learning to Be Productive course 100% free. So check it out, it's linked up down below, but let's dive into this iPhone mirroring here. Now I haven't even experienced it. We're gonna go through the actual setup here and my first initial reactions and tests right now. I just wanna say when I think Apple ecosystem, I think continuity and this continuity feature takes things to a whole new level. Well, first things first here, the public beta is out for iOS and macOS. So go ahead and get that downloaded and installed. Here's a quick look at the devices that macOS Sequoia is compatible with. You're gonna need a 2019 iMac or later, 2022 Mac Studio or later, 2018 Mac Mini or later, 2019 Mac Pro or later, 2017 iMac Pro or later, 2020 MacBook Air or later, 2018 MacBook Pro or later. To get this working, both the Mac and the iPhone need to be signed in to the same Apple ID with two-factor authentication turned on. And both devices need to number one, be near each other and have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled. That said, once the initial setup is complete, you'll later be able to use a USB-C cable without the need for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Last but not least, make sure that AirPlay and Sidecar are not active before you try this mirroring. So once you've updated both devices, your iPhone and your Mac, then you're gonna notice a new icon down in your dock on the Mac called iPhone mirroring. When you click it, you're gonna get this setup screen. Obviously, we're gonna hit continue here. Then it's gonna ask you to unlock your iPhone. And that's really it. It's very simple. iPhone mirroring is ready to use. Something to note is that your iPhone actually does need to be locked. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that lock button there. This changes from iPhone on use to connecting. Now it says require Mac login to access the iPhone. I can select ask every time to be prompted to touch ID or enter the password for this, or I can have it automatically authenticate every time that it fires up. I'm gonna say authenticate automatically. It's gonna ask you for a password to get this going. And there we go, I'm actually in. I can actually see my iPhone screen here on my Mac, this is very cool. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that if you begin to use your phone, let's say you pick it up and you open it, well, that's gonna shut down automatically that mirroring. It's gonna say phone in use. So then I'm gonna to have to lock that again and hit try again, which will fire everything right back up. Uh, let's say I wanna get into settings here. I can just tap on it. Uh, I can scroll up and down, very cool. I can tap the bar on the bottom there to basically simulate swiping up to the home screen. I can swipe over and see all of my apps. I love how the gestures that you're used to on your iPhone just work with the trackpad here on the Mac. So if I double finger swipe down, I can get this search bar here and let's go ahead and search for Safari. And I'm gonna go to YouTube slash daily tech. And I'm gonna play this video here and you can see that there's literally no lag. I mean, everything is very smooth. It's not dropping frames. What's cool here is you can fully utilize not just the trackpad, but the keyboard as well. So if you need to input text, for instance, you can go into freeform and add some text. And there you go. Now I can zoom in and out in freeform here. I can add and manipulate shapes. One thing that's kind of cool here is that your iPhone notifications when you're in this mode will then appear on your Mac as well. Not only that, but when you get a notification, it's going to play through the Mac speakers. So one thing I like about this is if you have an app that really only works works on your iPhone. They don't have a version for your Mac, but you want to look at that data when you're at your Mac. You can actually still get at that data and have it side by side your other Mac apps. One that's like that for me is this Fitness AI app. They only have an iPhone app. So I'm able to download that on here, open it up, 
and actually see all of my fitness information right on my Mac screen. I know one way I'm gonna end up using this is to access my security cam app. I've got several security cameras around the house, but I don't have an app on my Mac that lets me see those angles. And unfortunately, I don't have that set up here on this test iPhone to show you, but I always have to either see the little preview on my Apple Watch whenever there's like a motion alert or somebody's at the doorbell, or I have to grab my iPhone and get it out and check out that footage. It would be so nice to get that alert on my Mac, tap into it and actually see what's going on around the perimeter right on the iPhone screen. One of the coolest uses for this is gonna be the ability to drag and drop files back and forth between the two devices. Now, in this beta setup, it doesn't look like I'm able to get that working. I don't know if it's a bug or what the deal is. I don't have time to troubleshoot that right now, but I'm really looking forward to being able to do that because sometimes I'll shoot something on this camera app and instead of having to airdrop it, it'd be really nice to just be able to come in and access that app and get it transferred. Because I think there are gonna be times when you want instant file access to something that's stored on there that isn't gonna sync otherwise that you're gonna have to manually transfer and that'll make it so much easier. Something that's kind of interesting is you can get some games loaded up here and play those iPhone games over on your Mac. So here I've got mini motorways and I bring this up for a reason. You can see that it automatically rotated the screen orientation and that's something that's automatically gonna happen for you depending on apps and whether that's supported. Regarding gaming, I should mention that this actually supports up to 60 frames per second with the mirroring experience. Now you might notice my home screen bar is grayed out there and you might be like, well, how do you get back to the home screen then? Well, if I hover over this, you're gonna see these icons up in the top right. If I click on that grid, that's gonna take me back to my home screen setup there. And that grid icon is basically your home button. So if I click it again, it's gonna take me back to the first page of home screens. If you've got several apps open and you need to switch back and forth between those quickly, there's a button for that too. So right next to that grid icon in the top right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and you can see all the different apps that I've had open recently are gonna show up and I can switch between those very easily. Now there's not many settings that you can change. If I go up to iPhone mirroring and settings, you can see it's just gonna let me figure out how I want to uh, authenticate things, if I wanna automatically authenticate or if I wanted to ask every time. But something that is actually interesting and useful is if you go to view in this menu bar up here, you'll see there's three options, home screen, app switcher, or spotlight, and there's shortcuts on the keyboard. So command one will take you to the home screen, command two, app switcher, command three, spotlight. So let's give that a try. Command uh, two is gonna take me to the app switcher. Command one is gonna go right back to home screen. And command three is gonna bring up my search so I can do some spotlight search. I also wanna point out that I can go up to window in that menu bar there, and I can say move and resize so I can shoot this over to the left. I can shoot it over to the right. Now I know people are gonna come up with lots of clever uses for this. I think one of the best uses is going to be demonstrating or showing off something on an iPhone but using your Mac screen recording feature to actually capture it and show it off. So let's say for instance, you're the developer of Fitness AI and you wanna show off what it looks like to get signed up here on your iPhone. Well, I can record this entire experience, which in fact I'm doing right now, and then I can go through the motions and do a quick product demo here with a cool background, which is this wallpaper, which you can actually download as part of one of my wallpaper packs. I'll link those up down below. So there you go, that's how it works. That's what it looks like. That's how you set it up. Let me know what you're excited about, if this is something you're gonna use and how you're gonna use it, leave me a comment. Don't forget to check out the new courses. It's basically buy one, get one free, right? Pre-order the new one and you'll get learning to be productive 100% free instantly. And I should just end by letting you know if you're a longtime subscriber, I've got some fun new projects coming up on the horizon that I think you're really gonna like. And that's all I can say for now, but stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next video. Later.